Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Handball Movement Podcast. And uh, today I'm really honored uh, with me, there is uh, Coach Jukic, who's going to share a lot of experience. And uh, hi, Coach, how are you? Hi to everyone. Hi to you, Andrea. I'm, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Uh, if we don't leave this situation around us, I would say that I feel great. But yeah. in the same way, we have to believe that situation will change very soon and we will back to normality. And I would like to contribute this with, uh, with my personal optimism. I believe in, in sport. I believe in life. I believe in positive thoughts. And I, I really trust that we will be back very soon normality. Yeah, this is a great message to start the episode and uh, to keep a bit of uh, positivity in our heads. Um, so we, are, you are a well-known uh, person and coach in the handball world, but I have to ask you, as I did with all my guests, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your uh, life and how did it started your experience and your journey with handball. So as a player and then as a coach. Okay, that's always most difficult part. You know, I was uh, like probably every one of us. I fell in love with with handball in very early age in elementary school, and then played in the most beautiful time of life of every each person in high school and college. And like uh, any young player, I was searching for myself. I was playing on different positions, fighting for position on the court, uh, starting. Even I, I'm tall, I'm 191, I'm 192. I started like a left wing player, <laughs> modern at that time. And then on the playmaker position. And most of my career I spent as a left back jumper and shooter. For some of uh, today's standards, I end my career very early at age of 31. But uh, I never really left the hand those. Uh, all my life, I just changed position and stay close next to the bench. That was that was some beginning of my career. Yes. My my first some um, first experience as a coach is also unusual, but at, at that time that was um, common things for some of good players like I was to decide uh, on coaching. And uh, I, I wanted to be coach. That was in my head, even in playing time. So I had a double role for almost seven years. I start with the 24 to be the coach, but my playing career was still very high. And that was really not easy, you know, to play in the same moment and to lead your team for, you know, but uh, my ex players uh, authority give me real authority as a coach to lead the boys for some of them who was older than me much older than me and playing with me but together we managed to adjust and somehow on the same time I started to work with with the young players to create a new team to building this this building gene will remain my characteristic in in handball until these days Yes. And uh, what about your achievements in your career? So you, you had quite a few. Every time when people ask me, I, I like to say that uh, there's a different things in my life and my biggest achievement, uh, not the trophy, what won my teams in different countries, in Hungary, in Macedonia, in Romania, in Israel, but also people, this privilege to work with some of amazing people and leaders and top players, such as Ivan Lapchev, Daniel Djokovic, uh, Daniel Budai from Hungary, Nikolai Klaimovic, uh, Andy Schmidt, who still play, Carlos Carneiro from Portugal, etc. But uh, you're right, at the club level, I won some trophy with uh, with my ex club, like for example with Pig Seged, we won this first edition of Middle European Handball League on that time, that is Seha League, like now and playing in semi final on EHF Cup. Then I was playing with Vardoskopje in uh, semi final of Cup Winners Cup on that time. It was the biggest 
achieved with club until these days when the club won the Champions League. Then I played with uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. I'm especially proud of this because we, just with the local player, with the national players from, from players from national team of Israel, we came to the group phase of the EHF Cup, like the first club in the history of Israeli handball. Then, of course, uh, with the national team, uh, I'm especially proud of the generation of Montenegro, and I really trust that there is a big future and still in front of them because they're still a young team uh, playing in a European Championship in Zagreb 2018, uh, winning a Sweden and uh, uh, winning our ticket in front of Moscow, leaving first time Russia without to participate on big event. That was a really special feeling. And, uh, Proudly, I can say that, say that uh, I, I was coaching three clubs with the golden letters in European handball, like his Metalloplastica Shabbats at first, then Vardoskop and just Bucharest. Yeah, that's an incredible curriculum. And uh, before we go deep into um, what we're going to discuss today, the player selection, a really interesting topic, um, I would like to talk a little bit about one great project that you started. Now it's several years uh, that it's going on during the summer, and it's called Handball for All. And for all the people who want to check it out, they can find it also on the social media, all the information and on YouTube. But uh, if you want to tell us about Handball for All, what was the idea behind it? Why the desire to start something like this? And uh, yeah, what a great opportunity this can be for players and coaches to, yeah, to come and learn and contribute also to the handball movement in general. Uh, first, a uh, few words about the project. Uh, Handle for is Handle for all or Handle for you is <laughs> really something special in the whole Handle community. Yeah. Uh, project was created uh, to help some young players to reach their goal, to reach their potential. But um, immediately on the beginning, that was 10 years ago, we realized that. Uh, changing just the player side will not be enough. And then we build the project also for the coaches. For the players and the coaches who are, let's say, on the crossroad on their careers and to find their own path and to realize their potential. I'm really proud, first I have to say that I'm really proud of all my friends helping me to build something like this. This is not easy, definitely, and to raise the standards from year to the year. But the um, basic idea came from a situation that we take care about young people just until they are part of some competition teams. Let's say until U21, we are interesting about our young players. And when they are older, we left them to find their own way. And very often they, they lost their way. We stay without a lot of talented young people who are still not enough developed to take their ticket for the world. And the idea of individual approach to every single person is something what I'm really proud about. And in academy, we give them opportunity to feel like an individual and to work with the, some of the world best coaches and gain some new knowledge, ideas, and experience. But in the same moment to become a better people and mentally stronger person to understand that uh, some other top level players have a similar problem during their careers, face the similar, similar problems. Yeah, that's incredible. And um, yeah, how about the coaches who took part to this experience? So we, if any player want to join, then they have the opportunity also to uh, share this experience with great coaches and all the staff who helped you during these years. So if you like to mention some of these people who took part to these editions, uh, first, I have to say that work on academy is very intensive. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it all starts with the morning uh, SNC lesson for every individual with some tests, with some lessons, and continues through the morning and afternoon training in the sports hall and finishes with evening theoretical lessons with some of the sports topic, what united players and the coaches can be interesting for both of them. 
What I have to mention that during the last 10 years, because uh, projects start in 2011, yeah. uh, we have uh, participants from really all over the world, from USA to Japan, from Scandinavia to Iran, and the number of participants is very strictly limited on 18 to 20 players and 10 yeah. to 12 coaches. The reason why is that if we want to have an individual approach to every single person, then we know to then we have to know each other better. And then we have to know our names. We have to be uh, comfortable to ask each other whatever we want. For uh, everything is happen on English and coaches who are coming have opportunity, direct opportunity to speak with uh, some of the best coaches about any single details of the training process and these small secrets from our lectures. What I have to say that every of inning, every of, of this lesson, starting with um, a coach's presentation, then during the work, they have a direct contact, dynamic conversation. After the training, our lectors share all their thoughts and philosophy with the coaches and they ask why, when, how long, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And actually we exchange experience. It's not just one way direction story. That's something what I find very important. And uh, to speak about names, we, we try to make each edition very different and you know if someone coming once he can come every next year to be on different place yes and uh, we also try to represent a different type different handball schools like is scandinavian balkans spanish or german and let's start first from officials from some of the people who are officially there, like uh, IHF and EHF lectors, Klaus Feldman from Germany, Paul Andre from France, Alexander Bulligan from Spain, Professor Axinte from Romania, to the world coaches, world stars, like as coaches of Stefan Olsson from Sweden, Dragan Nadjic from Montenegro, Bob Henning from Germany, Carlos Ortega and Xavi Sabate from Spain, Nena Trostaric from Croatia, Dan Peric from Serbia, etc., etc. Way to apply is, is very simple. I, I said that there is a limited, strictly limited number of participants, but if you want to be the part, it's easy. You have to submit your application in time to send of handball.4.all at gmail.com. And uh, keep in mind that we are, we are really keeping this that uh, number of places has to be some small privilege, you know, and you have to apply on time. These years we have a Jubilee edition, as I said, after 10 years, and we will hold have the Academy from 28th of June, last week in, in June is always, to 4th of July in, in Klado, Serbia. I hope that epidemiological situation will allow us and don't spoil our plans. Yeah, I hope that too for you, your staff and all uh, the future players and coaches who want to take part in this experience. And uh, I find it great. I think it's a really a great opportunity. And as, as you said, how is it structured also uh, a limited number just to keep uh, the quality high and uh, allow the people to create a better network. I think it's a fantastic system. Um, so let's go deep into the... Uh, I, I, just yeah. one, one sentence. Uh, this is not uh, academy like some others is not for the kids it's for junior and older for some of the seniors coming year by year to be with us and that's why project is different because we try to change this generation of older juniors young seniors who will actually build the handle future in years what coming yeah yeah it's a really focused target yeah it's a good uh, it's a good thing um so let's go deep into the questions about today and uh, what, what we want to discuss about it is player selection. This is a really uh, complicated topic, let's say, or something that 
that where there's a lot to say and uh, we would like to hear your ideas and uh, yeah what is your opinion about this so um how do we approach the selection of players coach uh, you know the selection of, of players in any sport and of course in our most beautiful sport like is handball is one of the basic problems one of the basic topics that we must take about to talk about uh, many of problems what we face after coming from the bad selection you know and it's very difficult to be correct if we don't pay enough attention in time what has to be done uh, from one side problem is really much deeper than we can see from outside if we are not inside because we have to fight for we are small sports still and we have to fight for any single kid child want to play handball and we don't often think about important things like is a role what, what this kid or this player will take in coming handball not in handball what we live in handball what will come in 10 years we have to think about futures because we are witnessing that game is constantly changing and in the order to understand the importance of this topic we must on the same on the same time we must fight for any young players and from another we have to have a clear criteria when we choosing a candidate and to know that sometime is if we wrong select or deselect the player we make a mistake on both and this is a really topic that needs to be talked about and topic that requires enough time and really top expert from different fields because to selection to make a selection serious you don't that's not enough to have just a handball expert we must have a teams of people participate in different areas and different fields yes not an easy task and it's also a huge responsibility so if you want to talk about uh yeah this uh, this aspect of the selection what what are we looking for here physical mental technical what are those aspects you know who who can predict what handball will like in 10 years it's a million dollar question uh, you ask about some individual skills but actually handball is much more as we know we usually sell our sport that we say that this is a decathlon with the ball you know that we have a different things and that's why our sport is so beautiful and so nice that we we need a morphological characteristic then we need the motor skills that we need some technical coordination technical skills and uh, you cannot left these psychological factors what actually make a difference on the end and basic question is how to select the properly is there some recept what can be given to the people who want to work and uh, we have a this four part and i will after up on the end i will show some some pictures what can help people to understand but very important is to have a models what we need to compare models with anthropological characteristic for each position in team because uh, selection in handball is specific because we have a seven different position and seven different requests for each position and then on the based on these models we have to forecast progress by motor skills somatic and generic data and then, uh, uh, like a third step, we have to classificate selection efficiency. And of course, there is uh, problems, organization issues, and, uh, and other problems. And uh, looking for this uh, holy grail, holy secret of selection, very often we coming to this formula, what is success? 
success is ability of the players plus motivation. Actually, yeah. this is this is something what is basic formula, and then we can elaborate and say that success is abilities, and abilities are many things like uh, morphological, uh, functional, motor skills, and physical abilities, plus motivation, plus selection, and then uh, high level of professional work and living condition, of course. And many times we're coming to the question, how long is enough to make a high level players from uh, from talented child. Yes. And uh, many, many authors say that uh, this is, they mentioned this 10,000 hours, you know, in, in different yeah, areas, not hours, just in yeah. sport. Yeah, that, that's about six to eight years of work with them. But we have to be uh, really careful because serious work uh, cannot start in adolescent period. That's why we have to start with 11 or 12 years for the boys and 10 years for the girls. But funny things is that research, science, science research say that uh, one top treat is found in five players of thousand. Yes. And you know, to have in the same moment two players with the two top treats is really very difficult to expect that kids will come alone and be interesting about handball or there will be someone who will notice that kid in dozen in, in this in this ocean of talenting talenting boys True. I think there are uh, some interesting uh, aspects that you just mentioned. The first also uh, knowing the formula and what exactly is the process to uh, select players. It includes uh, many variables. So and not only related to the players, but also there are psychological variables. There are the ability of the staff and the coaches. So we are talking about building a system. And the other thing is exactly probably we have to reevaluate also the concept of talent. So we, we understand that there are kids who have particular traits. So you can, especially, it's really visible if a kid has a motor skill who are uh, better compared to the one of the kids of the same age. But then knowing that the process of selection and creating a player is so long, there are so many factors coming into play and maybe it's not just the physical ability that we can define as a talent. Maybe talent is a completely other thing. Um, sometimes I think it's just the ability to, you know, to have a player who is a hard worker and can stay in the gym and love the, the sport. So there's a lot who comes also from other parts here to create uh, and select these players. So it's a super interesting topic. And uh, yeah, probably we have to open our eyes also to, to new options in order to do this process in the best I way. I will share the screen to show some of the, can you give me opportunity yes. to share the screen? Yes. Um, to share some uh, presentation, what can help us to understand. No. Specific of selection handball. That's very interesting that uh, this number is we are, you and me, we are, we can say that we are one of 27 million of people who playing handball from almost 8 billion of people on planet earth what mean 0.3 percent of us play handball comparing with some big country like is germany with 750000 of registered player in 2018 from 82 million of course mean that in germany they love handball and you can see it because population of handball players is three times bigger than average yeah. in the world. A reason, one of the reasons maybe why Denmark is on the top of handball world in this moment is that they have almost 130,000 of players. This data, official data from 2014, I was asking them for the new data, but still I don't have the info. From five million and six hundred. 
and 10 times than in world than is world average comparing with very successful country like is Croatia would have 14,500 registered players from 4 million actually they are almost on the average world average and if this is one of the reason I have to remind you about what is selection and uh, what is task we already speak about this during during our conversation models what have uh, these requirements by playing position, but also in different environments. I have to say that these models are not the same in Korea and in Russia. And we have different models in our head. That's why you need your own models in your country. Then forecast, of course, what they, what they have to do in 10 years, efficiency and selection. And here you have a test. Usually we we doing some tests with the kids, basic motor skills tells and criteria. And here is the players who are selected. This is the famous Guilford schema from 60s. And here is selected and unselected and rejected player. And you can see here that we select some capable and properly selected player in group one, but also we reject some capable kids and who stay out of the box. But in the same moment, we select some of the kids who are not competent. And that's mistake of selection. Of course, there is organizational issues like is players group, parents, something very important in our day, rules of the group, et cetera, et cetera. And when we speak about importancy, we already mentioned some, some of, of those things and criteria like his methods, abilities, relation between affection and abilities, temperament, like you mentioned, morphological, psychological, and moral factors. But if we speak about models, that's something what I want to show for our people who will watch this. And I would like to show one something on our screen. And this is I will not say ranking list. This is data who is who in handball in our days and who is for me top nation. Because always when you make some models, you are concerned who is the best of the world, who is the best of the world. You want to be like successful people, yes. And then I have to say the top nations in this moment, if we separate top nations and category one, we have a four. We have these four, not just because they are champion of the world, some of the some of them, an Olympic champion, because they are in the field. This is European Championship for the national teams, men, women. This is a club competition. We have these four countries: Germany, Hungary, France, and Denmark, successful in all categories of handball. And then <clears throat> we have also three nations, like Norway. Croatia and Slovenia, who are also everywhere. And then inside top 10, let's say, are Spain, but without Champions League team in female competition, unfortunately. Russia, without men's team. Montenegro, without men's team. And Poland, without female's team. But with these 10 countries, we have to say that they are top nations. In category one, <clears throat> we have some very traditional countries like uh, Serbia, Sweden, Czech Republic, Romania, and Netherlands. But you can see easy that they are successful in national teams, but not successful in the club level. And sure. I cannot say that someone is top level handball nation without success in part of handball like his uh, clubs level or these four. Portugal, Belarus, Macedonia, and Ukraine without female handball. You know, Portugal is very fashionable, modern, successful team, a national team, also with good clubs, Porto, Benfica, Sporting, but without female handball. They are not the top nation. And that's why I put them in category one. And <clears throat> this is some somehow over your European handball, something what we can discuss really a lot. And uh, 
we create the model and then we forecast and our young player has to meet the standards what we create. There is one more very interesting thing uh, when we speak about handball in our day, this is team structure. And now with 16 players, is much different, but don't forget that in Olympic Games, we have just 14 players in the team. And then we cannot have two players by position, on, by each position and two defenders and specialists. We need the, uh, to build the players who can play on different positions in the team. And when we speak about selection, and after I will come back when we will speak a little bit about my book, that you need, uh, Sometimes when we speak about selection, we speak just about selection, keeping in mind attack. But also we have to take care about defense when we speak about selection. There is some methods, organization, an optimal period to start and uh, players' personality. But what I would like to say is something, you remember we spoke about this formulas. I will have to say a few words about the, our role, the role of the coaches. Yeah, please do. And very often we, we speak about selection of the players, but very rarely we speak about selection of the coaches and who is the people who work with the young generation, who are the people who will bring us to the next level because coaches are responsible for this part. And uh, here is the things what our players, not just the kids, our female and male players uh, take care about us. And uh, they observe us all the time when we lead them. And there is some characteristic what we need to fulfill to be a real leader. And what is important for them, it's interesting, this is first honesty, then loyalty to the team or the club or a project, then determination in actions, something what I really like to say that that's the passion. <laughs> Let's describe this in that way. Then ability to stimulate or to judge. Cooperation, definitely. And something what, what they really need from us, this is helpfulness. That's, that we are always open for some help, for some advice, to exchange opinion with them, to exchange ideas. If we observe time out in our days, much different than 20 years ago. You know, it's, uh, let's like to say that now it's not discussing, it's actually to have a right advice in the right place and to believe to each other, to exchange the good advice and to do the best for our team, for our players in the uh, in shortest period of time. And when we speak about talent, what you mentioned, and I will finish with, with this part, very often we speak, is it that really talent or decision, like you said? And there is an example on the word sport, and I will mention few, and I suggest our listeners to Google a little bit about this. One of the famous is uh, Polgar's sister case from chess. Uh, father Polgar was a Hungarian psychologist with a special philosophy. And he said that every child is a genius. And I have to say that I agree with this. His name was Laszlo Polgar. He declared his theory before his kid was born. And he looked for the, for the girl to build the family. And he asked what was, uh, what is something that we cannot discuss to be success, you know, in the, in the fashion, in the music, we can say that, okay, I like, but it's not, not so, so high. But in chess, it's so exact. And he never played chess before. And then three, three daughter, Zuzana, Sofia, and Judith, and all of them become, become world champion in chess. In chess, Zuzana so dominant in female com competition, and Judith, who was parallelly playing in the men's competition, 
and competitive with the best chess player in their time. And uh, that's one example. Another one is famous basketball player from uh, NBA and Croatia, Dražen Petrovic. And one of the proverb what I also believe that uh, if you suffer on the training that you enjoy on the game, <laughs> not opposite, with the special work. And there is a sentence from Professor Milanovic, one of uh, his SNC coach. And if, if you see this, you will understand how hard he was working each day. You see, penetration with 50 doubles, then 20 times throws, then 50 three points, and then 20 time throws, and then he running 10 times on the basketball court and do it again. And then he was working 200 ups, and then he shoot again. <laughs> And during one training, it's about 700 balls after he finished the training with, with others. And then Professor Milano would say something interesting because if you know these two names, Galis and Kutlai, uh, world legend of basketball and legend on Greece and Turkey, like amazing pointers, but they cannot do it because they don't have a power concentration. And Drajan do it, he was machine for the basketball. And then we coming for, for the conclusion, and I will suggest to our listeners to read this book, uh, Daniel Coyle book, what say the um, topic is talent code. And he said that greatness is not born, it's grown. And coming from success, coming from three parts, from the motivation of the players, from the master, coaches, teachers, and that's our role, and intensive exercise. And all these three things find each other in one place, call it success. And just in that case, we can speak about success. That's why, if you remember, you can find five talented players in thousand. And then you have, they need master teachers and the coaches and to work intensively to make success. And that's the story of, of success is something bigger than talent. Talent is important, but with as you work and master teachers is enough. That's why our role or all of the coaches is extremely important. Yeah, it was a beautiful presentation. And actually, I recently I was reading a book about Yuri Verkoshansky that in my field is quite famous, one of the most important, probably the most important stand conditioning coach for our history. And uh, I was uh, really uh, hit by reading at the beginning of the book that he said that, um, you know, the real coaches are the one who transforms a person into athlete. And that thing just, you know, it's kind of sound kind of obvious, but it's like hit me like a train because I said, oh, that's so true. That is so good. That's such a good definition. And it perfectly matches this presentation uh, together with having hard workers and all the other uh, aspects. And uh, yeah, it was a really great presentation. And I think it will help many people who are going to watch this. And now we can talk about another great project that you uh did not so long ago and i'm also happy to have one copy here with me and you wrote a book about uh, the defense three to one back to basic so what was the desire behind this book and why writing a book about the three to one defense you know uh i did it in both languages in yeah. serbo Croatian and english and i am especially proud about this and you will find also in the book something what we just mentioned. You will find uh, how these master teachers like Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan created different basketball or Lino Cerva and in our days, in his generation of the players, Domagoj Duvnyak or Zinaida Turchin and Igor Turchin in the past of uh, handball. And writing this book, I have something in mind to remove this veil of secrets from this defense. Because um, three to one defense was officially 
born, I have to say, in the uh, public scene on 1972, winning the first Olympic gold medal in the handball history, Yugoslavian national team with uh, Vlado Stencil, famous coach, officially promoted three to one defense. But still today, 49 years after, we have a veil of secrets and some so mystical presentation about this defense. And unfortunately, there is no so much handball literature and especially about defense, we don't have a, a lot. And I, I really trust the dominance of some defense is changing due year, through years. You know, uh, three to one will return again in glory days, like six zero or five one is changing and coming back. A three to one is a special handball philosophy of handball and have uh, many advantages. What is in our days much easier to apply because I will remind you about some special sentences from this defense. First rule is attack attackers. Be one step ahead play a counter-attack. And for me, very important is give a chance, David against Goliath, give a chance the weaker to win the better, better on the paper, of course. And I hope that this sounds interesting enough for the people to turn around. And the fact that this defense is a little bit different then, for example, 6-0. Six, six but I have to say in the same moment, different, simpler, easier to learn, because there is no improvisation. Even people think that this is something wild and unusual. Three to one is with strict ge geometrical rules. And you don't have any problem if you have two pivots or three players in the same position, like in 6-0, that you have to work a lot to resolve. And as a coach, you can just improve and complete your handball knowledge because these different things don't give a negative connotation. And they give a positive things, different things on different level, definitely, on different, one different approach on handball strategy and handball philosophy. But this is a basic human knowledge for myself. And this is my basic sport, life, and handball philosophy. Yes. Do you think that that's a personal question that because of this characteristic, so there are precise rules, there are precise movements, there's the precise task that any player has to do in this defense in all the different situations. Do you think this can uh, be uh, also, um, you know, the, teaching the three to one defense can be inside a precise moment of the player development in a, some part of their ages. So, okay, that age, we could use this system and this system can help them to develop in being better player. Um, do you think there's a, a um, you know, a, a perfect moment where to start to teach the three to one defense? It is very important that we open the eye and open the head of our players. First, they have to understand that uh, playing defense is easiest way to the court. And if you are in defense, that means you're on the court, then you will run in the fast break, then you will score. Then if you score, coach will say, okay, stay there. Yes. <laughs> you're doing that. That's why we have to advise our kids to play defense, our players to play defense. Second, it's very difficult really to separate modern 6-0, 5-1, or 3-2-1. And if you observe Kiel in our days, or Reinecke level, or Croatian national team, or Spanish national team who play this type of defense, you will understand how difficult it is to play against if your players knows to play just attack, just about some specific defense. Developing 
one kind of defense, meaning that in the same moment, you develop your attackers to attack on different defense. That's why it's important that we mention those two parts. And that's why in some of the country, like in Germany, they have in young age category obligation to play individual defense, to play three to one defense. And then just on the end of their days, they start to play six zero like a traditional. But the reason why I wanted to give new energy to three to one defense is to show that there is no secret because most of the time in the previous years, we have a, some different interpretation and some secrets, how has to play player on some position. And I wanted to explain how easy it is to play. And when I make a seminar, and usually I like to say that it's very easy. I can send to you by emails as a player instruction, what is your role? And in one training, just to combine your, to put you in your position and then you are ready to play. And that's why it's important that we think about future on handball also. And I think, I hope that is not far that on the end of the story, we will have a limited attack or we will have attack time value when attack can keep the ball. And then finally, we have to go out from the six meter line to try to take a ball. And that will open this game, open, uh, will be much more interesting for spectators. We'll be much further from the goal line. More dynamic. We will start to understand how important it is to have a, to think different and how easy and how genius is to give opportunity to the players to play not just on their own. Because once again, I have to mention that three to one is defense with strict rules and regulation, but not to limit the players. Actually, just to give them a right position that they can have a freedom to play on their own. You know, from one side, you have clear direction. From another, you have a place to be different. You have place to play on there with diagonal stance, with many of different things, what can be specific topic to speak about this. And three to one is really topic. And I hope that this book will help the people interesting about to have a more information and to understand that they are not alone also. And that this is nothing special. They have just to try. And once again, to be different is the basic human value. Yeah, I like it. I like the approach. And uh, I highly suggest anyone to, to purchase the book because I have it and I learn a lot. And that's just from my side. But it's uh, full of knowledge. And uh, especially uh, as the whole conversation of today, that's really inspirational. Also, the book is really inspirational. And uh, uh, this approach to give the player the knowledge first and then bring them with the knowledge to their own freedom on the field. I think it's a really important feature and has much much to do also with our uh, ourselves as a human being, not just as a player. So um, I really suggest this book. And I want to thank you, Coach, for this conversation. As I said, it was inspirational. And I hope maybe in the future we will have many more. And uh, uh, thank you so much for your time. This was, uh, was great. It was a great conversation. I wish you good luck with your project. I wish the good luck and good health for all our community. And I hope that we will start next season with the halls full of spectators and playing our game and doing the sport what we love. That looks like a dream in this moment, but I'm optimistic and I hope that we will have it this very soon. Thank you very much.